So yeah. That's too advanced. Okay. Well, I'm not too advanced, so I'll figure that out. Uh, okay, there's just this quick slide about me. I'm Nate Rosehart. Um, I graduated Letourneau here in 2008. Um, this just a quick snapshot. I'll talk a little bit more about each one of these things, um, kind of as we work our way through. But I'm going to talk about getting hired, like what the interview looks like, how to get an interview, and then once you have the interview and you've passed it, which you all will, what it looks like kind of just flying the line, a day in the life kind of thing. So that'll be the goal. I'm going to try to keep it concise, but I also want this to be really informal. So who are the airline guys that want to be airlines? I know the couple back here. Okay, so I'm going to pick, try to pick on you guys just because it's going to be realistic. And then I'm going to ask you guys some questions. Um, but interrupt me, please. I'm, I want it to be informal. I want you to interrupt, ask questions. Uh, I'm going to start talking, but please interrupt me and we can, uh, we can work our way through some things. So, um, all right. Most important thing here for the next slide about me, two-time fantasy football league champion. Very proud of that. <laughs> so I just want to set the precedence here. You're, you're, dealing, with a big, you're dealing with a big shot right now. Um, no, the most important thing in my life right now is my family. So this is my wife, Bethany. We've got uh, three kids. Hallie's five. Ethan is three. And my new boy, Logan, is four months. So I'm coming out of the haze of the newborn phase. So a coffee... If you're a pilot, you drink coffee, and if you're a dad of a newborn, you drink a lot of coffee, too. So, anyway, they're awesome. We live in Coppell, just north of uh, DFW Airport, so I commute out of DFW to Salt Lake City. We'll talk a little bit more about that later, uh, but I'm still relatively local to, uh, to Dallas. Um, <clears throat> the fact that you guys are here is great. So this is, like Steve said, a great opportunity. Uh, we would have killed for something like this, I think, speaking for myself at least, as a student, as an instructor to have guys come in and talk about their experience, like how do I get where you are? I, I would have been here at six, in, well, maybe at seven in the morning. <laughs> um, but I, I would have eaten it up. So thank you guys for showing up. I hope you get some benefit from it. Um, and, and I really do think you will. So there's a ton of knowledge and experience here. Uh, you'll see pretty quickly that I'm not a smart guy. The guys that are gonna be up here are way smarter and a little bit better looking and have way more experience and a wealth of knowledge than I do. So this, this presentation will be about uh, how if I can do it, I guarantee you can do it because they got to scoop down to get to me. So just be encouraged with that. Okay, so a little bit about me. I got my private uh, certificate when I was in high school, uh, Greenville, Texas. I know uh, Cessna 150 back in 2003. It was a lot of fun at Air Force Instructor. Uh, we barely fit in there together and I was, you know, a buck 30 soaking wet. Um, but it was a lot of fun. Came to Letourneau in 2004, back when we have, uh, Scott knows this airplane very well, 5-7 rotten trash, we, uh, Janitrol problems and whatever else that we had with that airplane. We had a lot of good memories with that, um, back at the old hangar. And then working our way through, uh, get to the new hangar, I instructed for a little, oops, see, went too far, instructed for a little bit. Uh, Part-time my senior year and then was a full-time instructor here for two years. Um, the last year I did the check airman stuff. So I was doing some of your stage checks and check rides. If you guys still do the in-house check rides and stuff like that, um, I was your guy for that. So I've been on both sides here as a student um, all the way, except for private. I didn't do private here, but private, or, or sorry, instrument, tail wheel, and all the way through commercial, MEI, double I, and all that kind of stuff I did here. Um, and then instructing on the back side. So, uh, granted, it was 10 years ago, but I got a little bit of experience doing that. All right, before we go further from that, <clears throat> I also want to keep things in perspective. We're going to talk a lot about airlines and how awesome it is. Um, but something that has always stuck with me that somebody told me when I was in college here is, Proverbs 16.9 is, In a heart a man plans his ways, but the Lord determines his steps. And I think that's very true, especially in our industry. You're going to see a lot of guys that make a lot of money flying cool airplanes, and you're like, man, that, that seems awesome. But if that's not where God wants you to be, then you're not going to be happy. Um, you could strive for all of that, which is great. It's great to have goals. But if that's not where you're supposed to be, then don't do it. Uh, you'll know. So just keep that in mind, uh, because that's, that's ultimately what we want to do, is make sure we're in God's will for our lives there. So... All right, like I said earlier, I'm proof anybody can get hired at a major airline. I barely had a 3.0 GPA, uh, so you don't have to have a great GPA. All these guys did, I did not. So here's my kind of story in a nutshell. 
how I got to Delta in eight years after Letourneau. So Colgan, uh, most of you guys remember this airline for a bad reason. Back in 2009, they had the crash of the Q400 that changed all of our FAR 117 flight rules and stuff like that. So um, I started there in 2010 flying the Mighty Saab. Whoop, whoop. Yeah, right. uh, the Swedish Blender, wonderful airplane, great people. It was my first airline. Um, I interviewed at American Eagle. Uh, it went great, but then I got a thanks but no thanks after that. So I don't know. It's one of those things. God didn't want me at American Eagle, I guess, that year. So uh, I went to Colgan. Uh, it worked out great. I, I love my experiences there. It's a fun airplane to fly. Uh, they went bankrupt um, and merged with Pinnacle Airlines, which then became Endeavor Airlines, which most of you guys are probably familiar with. Um, during that whole process, there was a lot of turmoil in the pilot ranks and stuff like that. Um, management and pilots. So I left and went to SkyWest Airlines and I was there for four years uh, flying the CRJ series. So 200, 700, 900 based in Chicago and Houston predominantly uh, commuting out of Dallas. I lived in DC when I was flying for Colgan so moved up there, had a great time uh, but decided to come back to Texas uh, when I got hired at SkyWest. Loved my time there, great company uh, but ultimately that wasn't my goal. So I thought that American probably would be my first choice, um, but just because it's convenient li living in Dallas doesn't mean it's the best airline fit for me, and they didn't call me. <laughs> so, the, uh, yeah, it sounds good, so. I went to Delta, and I'm very proud, uh, proud of that, and very happy that I'm there, very blessed, very thankful. I can't, I can't begin to just tell you how thankful I am uh, to have that opportunity. So that was in 2016. Uh, 737 the whole time. I did. I don't have a picture of me in front of the 73, so I got a selfie <laughs> <laughs> because I'm young and hip. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, like Steve said, it's a great time to fly uh, at the airlines. Be looking at the airlines. So, uh, let's see. I let you go to Alexandra. Is that right? Okay. You said you wanted to fly the airlines, right? Do you have an idea? I want to fly for an airline or I want to live in a specific place? What do you want to do? Uh, I would honestly prefer somewhere up north. Okay, so you're a more location-based kind of goal there. That's great. So there's two kind of, I would say, uh, general ways to look at what airline you want to fly for. You want to fly for a specific airline because they've got wide body flying, they've got great pay scales, they've got uh, bases, they've got a good pilot group, they've got growth, a good balance sheet, whatever it is, nostalgia, maybe that's what it is, or is it some place that you want to live? I want to live in San Francisco. So who, who has a base in San Francisco? We've got Alaska, we've got a tiny one called United, um, right, Southwest. You've got a lot of them there, right? So if that's where you want to live, then that kind of narrows down your options. But if that's what it is, then that's what it is, right? If you want to live in Dallas, Southwest, American, Spirit, and some regionals also have the bases here too. So if you could figure out kind of what you're doing there, if it's where you want to live or who you want to fly for, that's going to narrow down some of your options for you. Um, so the first thing, setting the goal. You've obviously already set a goal. Who's another airline guy over here? I think you. What's your name? Jacob. Jacob, where are you from? Missouri. Missouri. Where in Missouri? Hamilton. Uh, it's like a mile north of Francis. Okay. Christian Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> what's your goal? What, what's your airline goal? Uh, long term goal is to fly for an international airline, maybe United. Okay. Awesome. So you have a goal. That's great. Aggressive yet realistic and attainable. So somebody told me that, and it sounds easier than it is. But um, I think the first part is is very key. You got to be aggressive in what you want, but it's also got to be realistic and attainable. It sounds like you, you know which kind of what you want. You want to fly wide, but you want to fly international for a big airline. That's great. Okay. Do you know what the hiring minimums are for United? That's okay. Anybody know the hiring minimums for United except for Scott, who flies for United? Hundred hours. Hundred hours. <laughs> no. Is your name Chuck Yeager? <laughs> Maybe. Okay. So the first thing you got to know, whatever you're going to go somewhere, right? What are my hiring minimums? What are the qualifications I need? Can I get in with a restricted ATP? Do I have to have the full ATP? What if I'm military? Can I transfer some of those hours? How does all that kind of stuff work? Um, what's the easiest way to find out for United what my minimums are? How can I how can I find that out, Scott? Should be on our website. You can click through. Uh... Perfect. Yeah, website, right? Airline apps, I think it's who United uses, that's who Delta uses. Um, so a couple of these online uh, places is where you're going to want to go. Obviously the website for the company is probably the best bet. How do you apply? 
Scott, how do you play the United? Several ways. Um, AirlineApps.com is the way I did it. Uh, I think, I'm not sure about the ABA program now, how they're working through that, but I think that might be And I think, problem. yeah, some guys are going to talk about that too. Yeah, same with Delta. Airline apps, right? So at least you know where you want to work. Okay, now you know how to get there. Um, figure out how to apply because it's kind of important. You can't get hired until you apply. Lots of different ways to achieve your goals. If you're wanting to fly for United, you want to fly for Delta, you can do what I did, which was instruct, which I do recommend. Um, I'd say I probably learned the most as an instructor. Um, besides flying to different airplanes, even as a student, as an instructor. Are any of you guys instructors right now? Not you. Anybody? Laterno instructors? <laughs> yeah, okay. So if you've done it more than, uh, let's see, a day, you realize you learn a lot by watching. It seems very obvious. Um, but I, I would encourage you, whether it's for the school, whether it's Part 61, it doesn't really matter. You, you're going to get a ton of experience sitting over there. Because first of all, you've got to know it to teach it. And then you get to watch them screw it up which helps you learn so you don't screw it up later. It's a great way to do it. So uh, that's what I did. But again, there's a lot of different ways that you can get to building your hours and meeting your minimums and stuff like that. Um, nowadays, probably most of the paths are going to lead you through a regional airline, which is what I did, obviously, two of them. So what airlines are associated with uh, Delta, right? What airlines are associated with United? what are associated with American. That's kind of the big way to do it now is you've got these feeder programs that kind of start you here after college. Like I think Envoy's got one with you guys now, right? Where you can kind of get your foot in the door and then get your way into an interview and all that kind of stuff. Those are great programs. We didn't have that, um, I know when you guys were here, and then I didn't have that either uh, here as well, but it's a, it's a really, really good way. If you know I want to fly for Delta, okay, you should probably go look at Endeavor because that's kind of a straight shot to Delta. Um, but you got to research some of that stuff and figure out what you want. Don't be afraid to ask for advice, recommendation letters. Uh, I can remember sitting with Steve over coffee outside of his house a couple years ago asking him, how in the world can I get hired at Delta? Do I have a chance? Do I have anything at all that Delta wants you know, that I could possibly bring? Um, and I called, I was just talking with Paul, I hadn't seen Paul in years, but I talked to him on the phone when I was an instructor here asking about Colgan because he was there flew the Saab and, hey, what's Colgan all about? You know, have they gotten over this stuff from the crash? Have they fixed things? What's the training department like? Am I going to screw up my career? Or is this a great group? And he's like, man, it's a great group. You're going to learn a ton. Go for it. Um, and some of you guys might know Brad Wooden um, or Jimmy Page, those guys. So they were Sky West guys, right? Brad was my guy. So Mr. Wooden, I used to go talk with him all the time. Right, so I'm going to go sit down. Let's go talk about Sky West. So any information he could give me, that's, I wanted all of that information. So know, know the guys that work where you want to work and go talk to them. And then don't be afraid to ask them for recommendation letters. I think Steve wrote me one. It wasn't that good, so I didn't use it. <laughs> but <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm sure I did use it. Yeah, yeah. How do you think I got hired? <laughs> Steve's got some weight. Uh, but it is a lot about who you know versus what you know. Once you have your minimums, yes, you have to be competitive. Um, but these days... Competitive is kind of relative. Uh, it's not quite the same as it was even five years ago. So I've been at Delta for almost four years, and I've seen the average age of the new hire come down. I was young. I was just before my 30th birthday. But now there's a ton of guys that are 26, 25 years old, 24 years old. Um, and the average flight time is coming way down, too. I think I had about 5,000, and these guys are 3,000 hours or something like that. So you got to be competitive, yes, but... Competitive is, is different now than kind of what it used to be before. But you still got to know people, right? So if you want an interview somewhere, you've got to know somebody that's going to give you that push through, the push your application through so you can get somebody to take a look at it. Because if nobody looks at it, it's kind of hard to just have the computer randomly pull you in and get an interview. So build the connections. Um, like part of what we're doing here today is going to be really helpful, I think. All right, I'm going to catch up to see where I am here. Man, see, I told you I was going to go along with Marty. 10 minutes into this, I think. <clears throat> All right, you've got, your, you've got your goals. Obviously, you have to prepare. Um, the saying is that luck is when preparation meets opportunity. I think success is when preparation meets opportunity. Somebody told me that, and I, I prefer that quote better. Uh, you guys are all going to have opportunity. I, whatever it is you're doing, military, airlines, uh, mission, you're going to have an opportunity to, to do what you want. Laterno is going to give you a good foundation, 
and whatever you do with that, run with it. Uh, it's just how are you going to prepare for the opportunity that you're going to get. So a couple things. I'm just going to talk airlines because that's all I know. You're going to have to get some professional application prep and review. That means having somebody smarter than you and maybe forking over a hundred bucks to look at your application. Um, spelling errors are going to kill you. How many words is Delta Airlines? Three. <laughs> Three words. Exactly. Do you know how many people don't get an interview because they write Delta Airlines as two words? A lot of people don't get an interview. Know the company you're applying for. It's stuff like that. A hundred bucks could have saved them a year or two, maybe a frustration, which is going to be a lot of money. Steve's going to talk about in the long run if you don't get hired. Uh, so, very very basic stuff like that. Have somebody look over your interview. Uh, and then, like I said before, once you meet the minimums and you're competitive, uh, it's not really about being a pilot. It's about who you are outside of the cockpit, right? What are you doing for your um, volunteer activities? What are you doing in the community? What kind of leadership roles do you have? What's going to set you apart from 10,000 other applicants, right? And that's honestly the biggest thing. The guys in the training department will tell you the same thing. I want to be able to sit next to you for four days and not want to just, you know. Are we going to be able to go hang out on the layover? I mean, are we? can we have anything to talk about? Do you like cars? Do you do woodworking? I mean, I'm a big Dallas Cowboys fan, two-time fantasy league champion. Uh, you know, are you well-rounded, well-versed? Can you speak and just have a conversation and make eye contact and... You know, all that kind of stuff. It, it's a big player once you have the minimums. You gotta have all these other things here too. So start today. Like, if you've got an opportunity here at Laterno, do it. Put it on your resume. Yeah, maybe that shouldn't be your only goal, but it's a great thing to have on your resume. Do a, a leadership course or, or some sort of uh, leadership role or volunteer activities in aviation. It's really, really good stuff. I would say um, almost everybody now, if you're gonna get hired, you gotta have stuff like that on your, on your resume. Uh, let's see, expanding your experiences. Yep, got that part. Repeating. All right. Questions between some of that stuff right now? Just get into the interview. Everything okay? I know it's a whirlwind. You guys are doing all right. Hang in there. All right, congratulations. You've made it to the interview. We're going to just hit the highlights real quick of what it looks like. I've done four of them. Um, I'm going to talk about Delta because it was my goal, it was the most recent. And I've forgotten them all, except for that one, pretty much, because I'm old now. Can't keep all the things in my brain. So a typical airline interview is going to have your technical portion, your HR portion, some sort of psychological evaluation, and drug testing. Pretty straightforward. I think everybody here with all the different airlines, you're going to do all the same thing. So a quick highlight of the technical portion. You're going to forget a lot of the stuff that you're learning at Laterno. It's going to happen. So you're going to have to go back over all those books from turbine engine theory, and aerodynamics for naval aviators. God, that book was terrible. Does Mr. B still make you have that? Or I know he's not here anymore, but did you guys have to buy that for Flight Science 1 or whatever it was? Yeah, I have to do it for aerodynamics. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> terrible book. <laughs> it's yeah, Navy guys. Man, okay. But so your, your technical portion of your interview, most of the time, it, for Delta, it was a 60 question exam in 60 minutes. Um, you get a pencil and paper and they're going to just, you just go through the computer thing. A lot of it's turbine engine theory, it's high altitude aerodynamics, it's uh, regulations, it's IFR procedures. Um, side note, pay attention in instrument class. Bruce, do you still teach that at all? No. Okay. I re okay. <laughs> I remember Bruce taught instrument, right? And I loved it. It was great. And he is a wealth of knowledge. So if you've got a question about instrument, Laura obviously is teaching it now. Bruce, I would say, is another good um, person to go talk to about that. But shoot. Hammer on that stuff really, really hard because you're going to use that the rest of your career. Uh, let's see. Most of the stuff on there, you're never going to know if you actually passed it right away. You just do your best. You'll find out at the end. You kind of have an idea, but you're just going to study, 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 rote memory stuff, a lot of it. Um, digging back into your, your Laterno days here. So, The HR portion. This is probably what makes or breaks most uh, interviews. I would say uh, the typical HR portion of the interview is going to be a panel interview with either a line captain, a retired captain, or both, and an HR representative. So and in all my airline interviews, that's exactly what it was. So it's a, it was a three-person panel, you sit down, and they would just want to get to know you. Okay? They want to hire you. Just let them. 
Don't give them a reason not to. They called you for an interview. They want to hire you, okay? Um, and then they're just going to get to know you. They're going to go over your application, okay? And then they're asking questions while they're talking to you about these things. Um, did you want to do airlines? One of you two. You did. Yes, what's your name? Andrew. Andrew. Who do you want to work for? Do you know? Uh, I work for Delta. Okay, why do you want to work for Delta? Uh, I worked for them for about a year and a half. So yeah, that's awesome. What'd you do? I Sweet. That's great. Um, okay. I like that too. They will like that. I know. I'm like, let's talk later. Okay, <laughs> that's awesome. So, having that kind of experience, they're going to want to hear that. When you sit down and I start asking you a question, Oh man, tell me about that. What's something that you really liked when you were throwing bags for Delta back in the day? Oh man, I remember this manager. He was a real pain in the butt. Oh, but I do remember this guy. He was great. I learned so much. Have stories, right? Build a relationship. Have Write these things down because you're going to forget like I did. The stuff that I learned from Paul and at Colgan, I, I forgot a lot of it. But the stuff that you write down, you're going to use that stuff in your interviews later. So I highly encourage you to do some of that stuff. Um, you're going to be asked the basic questions. Why do you want to work here? What are you going to bring to Delta, right? Why should we hire you? Those need to be just coming off your lips because you practiced them for a month in the shower like I did. Right? I had six weeks to prepare for the interview. I was nauseating, I'm sure, my wife. Just shut up in there. Good grief. But it got to where it's not a, it's not a big deal. I'm going to hit my highlights. I know what I'm doing. I'm selling myself. This is the time to do it, right? You get one shot. Right? I want to be in there, I want to get my best foot forward, I'm going to hit it out of the park. Um, and so those kind of basic questions you got to have down. And then you're going to get a different uh, variety of things. Delta is a lot about the um, what would you do if forward looking statements. Uh, United, Delta does a little bit too, is more about a tell me about a time. I think from what I remember, I'm going to ask you too, uh, back looking statements. So Scott, I'm going to put you on the, uh, on the spot again. Scott and I went to college together, graduated, he's at United now. So I'm going to pick on him because I can. So somebody's going to say, Scott, tell me about a time you had a disagreement with uh, a coworker. So um, usually try to have a story that goes with it that will help kind of support your actions through what occurred. So I had a time where uh, I was fine with the guy at Express Jet, and he um, did put me on yeah, that's okay. <laughs> but, but yeah, it, that's it, exactly it, it, what I wanted, though. We had, we had, I can't remember the particulars, but it was a, a certain situation where we were flying. He wanted to do it a certain way. I wanted to do it a different way. And you kind of professionally work through the situation. And you want to demonstrate that you can have that attitude where, no, my way is right or his way is right. You want to kind of collaborate. Absolutely. So having the story is key. And he had it whenever he got interviewed, I guarantee it practice them all because he knew he was going to get those kind of questions. So when you've got a student, for these instructors in here too, when you've got a student that you don't maybe get along with, eh, start writing some of these stories down because it's a good learning experience and you can use it later. So uh, those are great, really great things to keep uh, in the back your, your back pocket there. Okay, letters of recommendation. I think I already talked about that. Ask for those. They're going to look at those too. All right, psychological evaluation. Uh, you're going to answer some questions, strongly agree, strongly disagree. Obviously, I can fall through the cracks and they'll still hire me. Um, then they're going to sit, you're going to sit down with a psychologist and just have a conversation. Like, hey, tell me about your childhood. Like, did you and your parents have a good relationship? Do you have brothers and sisters? Can we just have a conversation? That's just kind of what they're feeling out there. Drug test. Yep, you're going to pee in a cup. So uh, be smart. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> just saying. Okay, I know, I've, I've already gone 20, so we're moving along. Congratulations, you've been hired. Welcome to Delta. Uh, so now what? What did you sign up for? Well, hopefully you'll get a little bit better idea for these presentations, but um, I had about six weeks, something like that, eight weeks between my interview getting hired to starting class at Delta, um, and then going through the whirlwind. So anyway, it's been almost four years now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the... Uh, the PowerPoint that Alpha has on their website. I downloaded it, changed my name, put a couple of different things in there, but this is obviously a much better done presentation than mine, and you can see why. <laughs> so now, a typical day in the life uh, for my schedule. I'm a 737 first officer. I'm based in Salt Lake City, and I've been there almost four years, and I've been about 35%. So what that means is 
Um, if there was 100 guys in base, I'm number 35. Just public math. I know. It's scary. But, so I have a pretty good schedule. I, I get some of the trips that I want. I usually can have the weekends off, holidays off, stuff like that. But the, it's kind of rare at the beginning. You're not probably going to have that for a while. Scott will tell you all about that if you go talk to him later. Um, but anyway, that's where my background is here. So what's a typical schedule uh, in the airlines? They operate obviously all the time. The time when you want to be home is the time that everybody else wants to fly, right? You go flying right before Thanksgiving. Well, you're probably going to be flying people on Thanksgiving. That's just part of it. Uh, and, and actually, it's a lot of fun taking people to go see their loved ones. Schedules depend on a lot of things. The type of operation, if you're doing domestic, uh, if you're doing international, if you're doing charter stuff, uh, the, your seniority in your base. I would love to go to the Caribbean all the time and Paris all the time. I'm not number one in the company or in my base or in my airplane, so I cannot do that. 737 wouldn't make it over there either if I wanted to try to do that. So, some things you're limited on on your airplane, some things you're limited on your base. We don't do any Hawaii flying out of Salt Lake City on the 73. We do it out of LA or Seattle. So you've got options, um, at least with Delta, on some of those kind of things. And also pilot preference. If I lived in Salt Lake City, I would want to fly maybe one day trips or two day trips. I don't want to be gone from my family for four days if I don't have to be. As a commuter like I am, I'll talk about that a little bit more, but I commute from Dallas to Salt Lake City where I'm based, and then I start my trip. So most days I start getting out of bed at 4 in the morning in Dallas, try to catch a 5.30, 6 a.m. flight to Salt Lake City um, for whatever time my sign-in is for the trip, maybe 2 in the afternoon. So I'm senior enough to be able to hold a commutable trip, meaning I fly up there the day of. I don't have to go in the night before and buy a hotel and stuff like that. Um, but a lot of times you'll have to do that. So then I start my trip. After working for 8 hours to get to work, then I get to start work. But sometimes your seniority won't allow you to do that. You're going to fly to um, Tulsa for layovers, and you're going to fly to Sheboygan or some other places like that, which I'm sure are nice places. But it's not San Diego. <laughs> okay. Anyway, there you go. Um, so one person's trash is another one's treasure. Uh, Steve and I are going to bid different trips, and uh, Tim and I are going to bid different trips. We all want different things, which is great. A lot of different variety uh, to the flying. So for the regionals, at, on the Saab, where I was first at Colgan, I would fly six uh, legs a day easily, sometimes eight. You're doing out and backs. I was based in Dulles, Virginia. You're going to fly 30 minutes out here. You're going to fly 30 minutes back. You're going to do a 10-minute leg over here. You're going to do what we call the redneck triangle. Um, you're going to pick up, drop off, and come back. <laughs> you, you do it all. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Okay. So you fly a lot of legs in a day. And you know what? You learn a ton, and you're tired, uh, and you don't ever want to do it again, but it's a great experience. And it's really good perspective. So um, it, nowadays, I think most of the regionals, you've got these, these RJs can do almost transcons. Uh, at SkyWest, I was doing two, three-hour flights. Uh, I know Express Jets the same way, these E-175s that Envoy has too. It's, regional is not really regional in the sense that, that we knew it as uh, before. So, probably not six legs anymore, but it could be. Uh, shorter overnight sometimes, range of trips, kind of like the majors. Uh, longer legs for the majors now, which is good. We don't want to work as much, uh, but sometimes we still have to. So domestic trips, one to five days, international trips, Steve can talk about that more. Um, but typically, one crossing, lay over 24, 30 hours, and then, and then cross back. So anywhere from three to 11, 10 days, something like that. Obviously, you have to meet all your 117 requirements for those. But again, within any base, on any airplane, there's a lot of variety between trip lengths, um, layovers, all that kind of stuff. So here's my schedule uh, for February, because it's actually pretty good. I thought I'd take a screenshot of that. So some of this stuff here. So I've got a three-day trip I just finished uh, last night, a whole whopping two days off to spend with you guys and my family, and then a four-day trip I start on the third, and then I got some time off after that. So uh, that's... Honestly, I do a lot of these kind of schedules, three days, four days. Um, I commute up the morning of, typically, and then I can usually get home the night I finish my trip. Make sense? So a typical day, this is my trip I just did. So it started in Salt Lake City. I don't know if you can read any of that stuff. Uh, the sign-in was 216, and uh, I went to Seattle. Then from Seattle to Austin, I had a 30-hour layover where I worked on this beautiful presentation. And then <laughs> <laughs> it was great. 30-hour Austin layovers are fantastic. Um, and then the next day, day three, was Austin back to Seattle, Seattle to Salt Lake City, uh, and I'm done. Love that trip. Not all of them are quite uh, like that. That's a pretty good one, but I like to fly those when I can. 
So multiple legs in a day. Sometimes you'll just do one. Maybe it'll be a transcon. But out of Salt Lake City, for me, if I do one leg, it's typically to New York or Boston, layover, and then maybe Boston to San Diego or LA or something like that for the longer stage lengths. All right, commuting. I hit that just a little bit. Um, the cool thing about the airlines is you've got options to live where you want. Like we were kind of talking in the hallway, if you want to live in Hawaii, you can do that. But it's just going to be harder to get to work. So it's a blessing and a curse. I like living in Dallas. We've got great community there. And uh, we've got an established, um, yeah, established community. We like it. So I'm going to commute for at least a little while. It's an option that we have. So with that comes more responsibility. You've got to get to work when you're supposed to be at work, right? If your company wants you there at 6 in the morning, well then, yeah, you're going to have to go up the night before. If there's thunderstorms forecasts, or like now in February, we're talking snowstorms and ice in Dallas, right? So sometimes that means being proactive and kiss the wife goodbye. i got to go up the night before. Sorry, i got to be there, right? It's my responsibility. So you have to look at that stuff. Plan ahead. The cool thing is we can sit in the jump seat. It's the If you're not familiar, there's one or two extra seats in the cockpit, either for an evaluation or if it's not taken by the FAA, uh, or a Czech airman, we can we can sit. It, Steve gets a lot of Czech airmen on his flights, always evaluating him. Uh, not sure why. But then then you can have another pilot. We typically have reciprocal agreements. So as a Delta guy, I can ride on United, I can ride on Alaska, I can ride on Southwest, and, and back and forth. So that's how a lot of it you can get to work. So I look at all the flights the day of, and I'm I can list for uh, for different ones, and I have to make sure I've got two hours between my flights and the backup and all the stuff to get me to work on time. Uh, it's a whole game, just like I said before, to get to work to start your job. But it lets me live where I want to live. All right, typically that means one hour prior to departure, you've got to be there. Be there. You're checking in with the crew lounge. You update your iPad. We don't have to do the jet charts anymore. My goodness, what a wonderful thing. Um, dragging around your bags. Uh, meet the crew, either that at the gate or in the airplane uh, as the first officer. Typically, the captain's going to fly the first leg. Uh, you're going to do the walk around um, and kind of flow the overhead, if you will, set up everything. And then he or she is going to work the computer. So they're going to load the flight plan and stuff like that, uh, typically for the first flight. So catering, a lot of that stuff is uh, not our problem anymore, which is fantastic. We've got people you can call. Hey, you're missing catering items. Call somebody, send somebody a message. It's great. Uh, but you are responsible for a lot of it. So just a lot of things in the back uh, going on. The paperwork, it's the most important thing, coffee and paperwork, right? So this is just a kind of quick screenshot of the dispatch release for a Delta flight. Uh, if I picked the right one, I did, Seattle to Austin, looky there. This is just kind of shows some things, departure time, arrival time, the flight plan altitude, elevations, our route of flight, um, the IKO flight plan, nobody cares about that. How many passengers are going with us, min fuel, if we've got alternates, all that kind of stuff, and there's 30 pages of wasted trees that we get um, printed out every single time. We also have it on the iPad, which hopefully we're going to that sooner rather than later for the regulatory way to do it. So anyway, that's what we look at. Make sure everything's good to go. <laughs> then we've got, this is this the JEP screenshot. There's my flight. Uh, obviously, I took the screenshot when I already made it to Austin. Slacker. Oh yeah, it kind of was called it. This is this is when I was telling you we lost our GPS outage right here over Texaco. Uh, we were talking about this before. We had to kind of do some raw data, which I hadn't done that in a few years, so it can happen. Okay, so then you're setting up your office. You're checking all your things. What are all the buttons do? Yeah, you guys know this. Sorry, this is an Alpha, probably for high schoolers. Um, but all this stuff is your responsibility, whether it's delegated to you by the captain or the captain's going to do it, make sure everything is done. They'll teach you all this in NDOC, of course. Uh, I don't know what that funny looking thing is on the right, but the top one's a 7.3. <laughs> Notice all the buttons that you have to look at. Okay, duties and responsibilities. Uh, you can read through the list, um, but it's extensive, yet it's not. It gets pretty, I don't know, it gets pretty normal. Um, you do your thing, you get in, you make your nest, and you're ready to go. Um, those are all the things that you're, you're going to run through before you even push back. Coincidentally, that means you start getting paid. So all this you're doing for free. If you want to think about it like that. 
Once you get pushed back from the gate, you start your flight. Obviously, you're going to have weather because we fly in it every single day. You guys know how it is around here, thunderstorms too. So most of the flights can be completed safely, even if you've got thunderstorms, ice storms, stuff like that. Um, delays, diverts, cancellations, they happen. Uh, like this one right here, that's not mine, but I liked that picture, so I took it. Yeah, that happens occasionally, especially in Chicago. Uh, and then that's a whole other mess you've got to deal with your Part 117 rests and stuff like that. Uh, and we have dispatchers that kind of track that thing. But you got to know it too. You got to know the rules. We've got a flight weather flight weather viewer. It's kind of our I don't know, every airline I think has them now, but this is the Delta version. Um, a radar display on the top. It's data linked through Wi-Fi, and then this is a turbulence plot kind of on the bottom. And so the dispatcher will kind of look at the forecast and plan our altitude. I see we're only going at uh, flight level two six zero for now, and then we're going to kind of bump up over Cimarron up to a higher altitude to get over some of that turbulence. So we've got really, really good tools when it works uh, at our disposal nowadays, which is really, really cool. So a lot of these things can help for passenger comfort as well as obviously our comfort and safety of the flight. All right. <clears throat> yep, yep, yep. Thank you. I told you I was going to go long. I got, I got, we got a lot. We got a lot. Okay. Uh, layovers. Okay, so this is awesome. If you can have good trips with good layovers, you're going to really enjoy your life. Uh, short layovers, they're fine. Uh, sometimes you just want to go to bed. I got a newborn. I want to go to bed as soon as I get there, right? Good night. See ya. <clears throat> Average length layovers, 12 to 16 hours. Go to the gym, go out to dinner, uh, happy hour. Whatever it is you guys want to go do, you at least got a little bit of time to go do that. Uh, longer layovers, like when I was in Austin a few days ago. Go do whatever you want. I got friends in Austin. You got museums. You got uh, great barbecue. You got a ton of stuff you can do. So this job is going to give you uh, opportunity, whether it's on stateside or it's internationally, to do a lot of this kind of stuff that most people can't do. So it's really, really cool uh, to have that kind of opportunity. So as your seniority progresses, this will be more important to you. So it's uh, it's fun to look at and see what you can got coming down the road. So we get picked up from the airport after we finish our leg, we get to Austin. Uh, the crew goes out to the van together typically. Sometimes we stay at different hotels from the flight attendants. But the company arranges the hotel for you. So I'm not you know, on the phone arranging my hotel and calling an Uber to get to the Holiday Inn. It's all taken care of. They show up when they're supposed to normally. And, and you stay at decent hotels. Um, and it really is pretty seamless most of the time. Um, which is good because I don't have any extra brain space to try to figure out how to use all my points for a hotel. So the last leg of the trip is the most important leg of the trip. It's go home day, right? It's go home leg. That's when everybody it goes early and you're always early or on time on that leg. So if you're a non-commuter, when you get back to Salt Lake City, see ya. You go to the crew lot and you go home and you're home in I don't know, 30 minutes, however close you live to the airport. So for me, whenever I'm done with my last flight, so yesterday we landed about uh, 12.30. Um, say goodbye, nice flying with you, Let's kiss the passengers goodbye for a little bit, and then I'm looking at how I'm getting home, right? So there's an American flight that leaves at, uh, in an hour from now, I'm going to go over and check on that, and then I've got a Delta flight that leaves 30 minutes after that, so I'm going to go over there and wait on that flight. So I didn't make it on my American flight yesterday, I made it on the Delta flight. This is kind of the way it goes. So I finished my trip in Salt Lake at 12.30, and I got to my house at 7 o'clock, 7.30 last night. So a little bit longer of a day than uh, just driving home. So again, all these things to consider if you're commuting or not. Okay. <laughs> Probably don't have time for a lot of questions now, but I saw a lot of you guys writing stuff down, which is good. Uh, come talk to me later. Same with all these other guys. We want, we want to answer the best we can from our uh, experience. Again, most of these guys way more experience. So go ask them, and then I'll listen too, because I probably want to learn too. But please feel free to ask questions. All right, thank you guys. So, so Nate mentioned uh, about having contacts, and how many of you guys know airline pilots or have an airline pilot contact? Every one of your hands should be up because.